In the last few videos, we were looking at electrophilic addition of alkenes, such as with halogenation and hydrohalogenation of alkenes. We were focusing on finding a nucleophile and an electrophile. But with these next set of reactions, we're going to be focusing on oxidation and reduction. In general chemistry, we learned oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. But when it comes to organic chemistry, we're going to put a different scope on looking at these reactions. When we look at oxidation, we're going to see how the loss of a hydrogen atom and the gain of an oxygen, nitrogen, or halide helps us catch that the process was oxidation. For reduction, it's going to be the gain of a hydrogen atom, the loss of an oxygen, nitrogen, or halide. So when it comes to organic chemistry, oxidation and reduction becomes more of a trend than it does a counting of oxidation numbers like we did in general chemistry. One of my favorite trends to focus on to see the relationship between oxidation and reduction is to look at the alcohol. From the alcohol to an aldehyde or a carbonyl group having that double bond to the oxygen, well, that's an oxidation process. And going from a ketone or an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, having that OH group attached to the carbonyl carbon, that's also an oxidation. And finally, we can have the max oxidation with forming carbon dioxide, carbon being double bonded twice to two different oxygens. So as we go from an alcohol, carbonyl, carboxylic acid, and CO2, those are oxidative steps. And the reverse going from a ketone aldehyde to an alcohol and an alcohol to a hydrocarbon, those are all reductive processes. Now, when we look at different reagents or different chemical compounds that are gonna be oxidizing or reducing our reactants, there's strong oxidizers or reducers that can make big jumps, such as an alcohol straight to a carboxylic acid. Whereas there's weaker ones that would do just single steps. For example, an alcohol to a ketone or aldehyde. Now, even though we're looking at alkenes throughout this video, I like to see this relationship with alcohol, carbonyls, carboxylic acid, since it's visually easy to tell the loss of a hydrogen and the gaining of bonds to oxygen. When it comes to oxidation and reduction reactions for synthesis, we don't really focus on some of the steps like we did with electrophilic addition. Now, there are a few handful of redox reactions that we focus on each of the steps. But for our first one, the oxidation with KMnO4, we don't focus on the steps. KMnO4 is an extremely strong oxidizing agent. So in the way that we saw that a strong oxidizing agent can take an alcohol all the way to a carboxylic acid, a strong oxidizing agent is going to cleave the double bond of the alkene and create two different products. And depending on the amount of hydrogens on each of the double bond carbons, depends what kind of products we get after the double bond is cleaved. So the rule of thumb for this reaction is that if the double bond carbon has zero hydrogens, once it gets oxidized, it will be forming a ketone. If it has one hydrogen, after the oxidation process, we will be forming a carboxylic acid. And if it has two hydrogens, meaning that the double bond was terminal, that means that we're going to form a carbonic acid. Carbonic acid decomposes into carbon dioxide and water. So one way we can think about it is that if it has two hydrogens, it's going to break down to carbon dioxide. Examine the example. In this case, we have a terminal alkene. And because we have a terminal alkene, the double bond carbon to the furthest right is going to be oxidized fully to carbon dioxide. The other double bond carbon, after the double bond gets cleaved, is going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So the oxidation process with KMnO4 for this alkene is going to give us two products, one carboxylic acid and one carbon dioxide. The second example is going to be the oxidation of alkenes through oxymercuration. So this is using a mercury product to oxidize our alkene into Markovnikov alcohols. So the first part of this reaction is a lot like electrophilic addition. 
but the reaction ends with a necessary reduction step. This is why it's called oxymercuration reduction, even though we're oxidizing the alkene to alcohol. But this reaction starts off with the alkene reacting with mercury acetate to create an intermediate like we've seen before, definitely with the halogenation of alkenes. Water, the solvent, is going to attack the more substituted end of our intermediate, get deprotonated, and leave us with an alcohol with a mercury acetate attachment. Now, our second step, which is the reduction step, is going to be NaBH4 reducing that mercury acetate attachment to leave us with the Makarnikov alcohol product. And this product forms a racemic mixture. So if the molecule is carbon, we will have an even amount of S and R enantiomers. Last reaction I want to look at is called the catalytic reduction of alkenes. In this case, we're going to be reducing an alkene, a double bond, to an alkane, fully saturating the molecule. Throughout this reaction, we actually use a transitional metal such as palladium, platinum, or nickel as a catalyst for the alkene and hydrogen gas to be adsorbed onto to allow the reaction to occur. So, following the steps of the animation that mocks, the steps of this reaction, hydrogen and the alkene will be adsorbed onto the surface of the metal catalyst. The pi bond in the alkene will break as the alkene becomes adsorbed onto the surface. Hydrogen gas will be broken into two hydrogen atoms as it becomes adsorbed onto the metal surface. Finally, the individual hydrogen atoms will react with the alkene that was adsorbed onto the surface, creating the alkane that will be released from the metal. Throughout this video, we were able to explore one strong oxidative pathway with k 4 one mild case with oxymercuration of alkenes, and the main reduction pathway for alkenes, saturating them to alkanes with catalytic reduction on a metal catalyst. In the next video, we're going to talk about more oxidation pathways with alkenes, and that's it. We will finish up all our reaction or the main reactions we want to look at for alkenes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it was helpful for those that are studying organic chemistry, especially oxidation and reduction of alkenes. Remember, all the graphics that you see me use throughout this video are for free download on the link below. And I hope you have a great day.